That woman was killed. Somebody set me up. I lost 15 years of my life. Let's start from the beginning. You make women feel like they're the eighth wonder of the world. I'm not the same guy that I used to be. But I need to go back to work. Why not? People who set you up, they're not going away. I found out who did this. Football season is officially back, but DraftKings is here to lighten the mood. Whether your team won or lost in week one, DraftKings, the official sports betting partner in the NFL, is giving you a shot at an easy W. New customers, all you have to do is bet $5 on any NFL wager and instantly receive $200 in free bets. That's right, DraftKings is giving all new customers $200 in free bets when they place any $5 or more wager on a football team of their choosing. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use the promo code SMOKE and receive $200 in free bets instantly when placing a $5 wager. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Welcome back, All the Smoke 2022 Summer League. Yeah. It's been a good day so far. Hey, man, we off to a good start. Going to finish it off with another good one, man. Welcome to the show. Legendary point guard, Bay Area legend, Jason Kidd, I man. appreciate it. Thanks, thanks, man. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for being here. No, thanks for having me. Let's get right to it. Fresh off the Western Conference appearance. Uh, great run by your team. Love the way you've pretty much ingrained defense into your guys' identity now. Tell us about that process and then just the run you guys made this season. Yeah, I think uh, this is my third time back in Dallas. So, you know, being drafted and then being able to win a championship in Dallas and then, you know, come back and, and coach. You know, right. I think as players, we never think about coaching. Mm -mm. Uh, we're just thinking about getting numbers and winning. And, yep. and, and so uh, to be able to go back where it all started is, is uh, surreal. So, you know, my press conference, Dallas is known to be a team that likes to score. And I wanted to kind of change that theme and talk about defense. And I know a lot of people were questioning, are the Mavs going to really play defense because they're going to put the ball in the basket. Right. And so to win championships or to win any level, you got to play both sides of the ball. And so that was what I wanted to try to get across. And somehow, some way, we found a way to do it. How long did you feel like that process was? Because, again, like I said, that's not a model of a typical Dallas team. How, how long did you feel like, okay, these guys are starting, the, the light's starting to come on? I thought around Christmas. I've always believed this. You know, as a player, you find out who you are by Christmas. Uh, as much as uh, you want to come out of the gates and, and win and make every shot, I think when you're a veteran, uh, you find out, okay, this is who we are this year. Every year is going to be different. Mm -hmm. But by Christmas, I think you really find out who you are. And I thought, you know, right around Christmas, the start of the new year, we saw the defense tick up. go up, mm -hmm. and uh, we we took off. And uh, and it started with our, our best player, Luca. I asked him to participate, fight, and, and he did that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so when your best player does it, it's easy to talk to everybody else about mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about Luca. We're going to get into him a little bit later, but since you mentioned him, just what kind of player, person, and, and is there a ceiling for someone as talented as him? <laughs> no. Yeah, Jack, Jack answered the question for me. You know, when you look at the ceiling, the sky's, I mean, he can fly 40,000, 50,000. Mm -hmm. I mean, however, how you want to go. He can get, until, he, until he gets tired. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at his abilities to control the game offensively, uh, he's only 23 years old. Baby still. People yeah. forget that. Um, and, and, and loves to play the game. And so I, I'm just lucky to have the opportunity to have a good seat, watch him play. <laughs> right. And then also just try to help him what I see to make the game uh, with no stress. And that's something that we talk about. If he was sitting right next to me, he would talk about, Coach always talks about no stress. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, you know, he's a believer that he can take on the world. And, you know, when he uh, hits his stride in the sense of understanding how to use all the pieces, uh, shoot, the sky's the limit. Have you seen that kind of just IQ and someone that, yeah, I mean, obviously you were a high IQ guy. For someone his to be able to do all that he does at his age, 
Uh, I haven't. Um, when you talk about someone who's played uh, overseas, uh, he's been a pro, you know, 14, 15 years old. Um, you know, you look at what he's picked up from being a pro early on right. in life. And so he's not afraid. Mm -hmm. uh, he's seen the double teams, the switches, mm -hmm. uh, the boxing one. Um, and he believes that he can beat them all, and and most of the time he, he does. Can, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so I think when you when you look at what he does, uh, he's different because he has his own speed limit. Mm -hmm. um, he's not you can't he, speed him up. Neither. Nope. Nope. Um, and I think sometimes what's not talked about is his size. He's a he's big. big. Yeah. He's a big boy, and I've been around uh, LeBron, and he has that LeBronish type uh you know height uh thickness in the sense of being a big boy he can he can hold you off uh, he's not afraid of contact um but he's not afraid of the stage right you know he loves the stage the stage is his and with 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 you knowing like okay you talk about defense but you knowing how important it was for you to lead on both ends like everything starts with the point guard right. is he figure is he getting that now is he getting to that point now yeah you know i think uh we saw it this season um you know there's times when as you know, in the NBA, they're going to pick on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're going to pick on the best player if he mm -hmm. doesn't want to cooperate or participate playing defense. Mm -hmm. And so once he understood that if he put up a fight, that he had his teammates had his back and they were behind to support him, um, coaches were supportive. We're, we're here as coaches to give you the answers mm -hmm. uh, to the test and what's coming. And then it's for you to be able to digest when you see that action coming, like, oh, coach told me this is what they're going to mm -hmm. try to do. Yeah, be ready for it. It makes the game so much easier. So with myself and Luca, we have a great uh, relationship and communication and, and helping one another. I've been in his shoes, uh, but at 23, he's a little bit advanced of where I was at mm -hmm. 23. Mm -hmm. But he, again, uh, he loves to play the game. He loves the competition. He loves that everybody's focused on him to try to stop him. And he, he and they can't. <laughs> and they can't. They, they try. They, they can't. Try. They try. Season's over. Great year. Thank you. You already ready for next year. Where's your head at now? Like, what, what, what are you thinking right after this great year? Yeah, you know. Um, of course, losing Brunson. Yeah, but we'll get to that. <laughs> 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 but, you know, this is funny. You ask that question. You say the nice things. And you know in this league, uh, that season's over. Yeah. Right. Right. On to the next. Mean nothing. It, it, yes. Because <laughs> um, there's only one winner. Everybody comes in last. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Golden State won the championship, so everybody else came in last. And so we're just at the beginning of this journey. And uh, we talked about defense. And one of the things that we'll talk about going forward is can everyone just get better? You know, I'm only asking you to get better at 1%. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, that's all I'm asking. If you can get better at 1%, mm -hmm. it makes our team 15 to 17% stronger. Yeah, yeah. Right? So take the wins and losses out of it. Um, that means everybody had a good summer. Everybody has a good season. And mm -hmm. so uh, that's the way we'll approach it. Um, we bring up JB, Brunson, losing Brunson. But... The biggest thing is I'm happy that he got paid. Yes. He helped us. Because uh, you've been play. there. Yes. Uh, we all, uh, I know Cuban doesn't like this, but I love when I can help people get paid. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell a player um, first day of camp, hey, tell me what you want. Well, everybody wants shots. Everybody wants minutes. But that's not the truth. Mm -hmm. They want to get paid and they want to play. Mm -hmm. Cool. I can help you do that. <laughs> yeah, right, right, okay. right. But the other part of that is I'm just going to ask for a couple things. Mm -hmm. Just okay. trust and communicate and play hard. Mm -hmm. And those things that you ask for me to help you get will happen. And if you ask Brunson, um, he would tell you that he, he listened Phew. and good things happened. Did happen. he ever. And, he, and, and I, I only want to put people in a position to be successful. successful right? That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. and, and there's 30 companies in the NBA, mm -hmm. we all can't stay on the same, same company. Yeah. So for him to go to New York, to get paid, to have the opportunity to run his own team, I'm happy for him. Me, me you know how good of a coach you are, and me and I, I know how me and him love the game, how we play the game. It bothers me when you have to ask people to play hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, as, as you know, um, it's a different athlete, yeah. different player. Mm -hmm. um, playing hard is now a talent, you know, Ooh. you know. Being able to, uh, you know, check that box. So to be, That's your boy. Your boy said that. Oh, J-Mac told me yeah. that. We was talking about Greek freak. He told yeah. me that. That's the talent. It's a talent Man, now. Um, uh, as we grew up, that was never... It was a in, must. It, yes. It was never in doubt. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other side of that, too, is how many, how many guys really love the game? Mm. How many guys love to be in the gym and sweat? And or, not what the game can do for you. 
Yeah, or not even go to the gym and think they got better today. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you have to spend time in the gym. When you look at yourself, you got to spend time in the gym. Mm-hmm. You learn from each other. You learn from Gar and Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes learned from you. Yeah. So when we played in the regular season, he knew what your go-to move was, but then you made you better because you had to now find out, I got to work on a secondary a move yeah. when I see Matt. So Matt doesn't know that I have this next mm-hmm. move, but I think the big thing is just the the teaching um, to be able to work and the imagination. Um, you know, hopefully our imagination for our young younger players will continue to grow because I think we're losing that a little bit. Nico. Yes, uh, sir. Nico is somebody who I love, man. Uh, <laughs> main reason why I got my Jordan deal back. Uh, <laughs> he is my guy, but I just love the way he transitioned from where he started to running Jordan, now to being with the Mavericks. You know, talk about your relationship with him and, and how proud are you to see his, his development. Yeah, I've been trying to get Nico for a couple of years to become a GM. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried in Milwaukee, um, and then uh, that happened here in Dallas is unbelievable. But our relationship goes back to to the, that swoosh. Everybody knows Nico, mm-hmm. and then when you talk about Nico, no one has anything bad to say about Not one Nico thing mm-hmm. because of his relationships and the way that he takes care of people. Um, and so I'm lo- I'm so happy to have him as a brother, mm-hmm. but also as a teammate, um, being able to build a championship team in Dallas. And uh, we're lucky to have him. And uh, and he's done an incredible job. Uh, you could talk about the trade, KP, mm-hmm. uh, being able to get Spencer and Davis, but being able to understand what it means to build. But also, he's helping teach us about relationships. And as we talk about, you got your deal back, mm-hmm. right? But he's always responded to a text or phone call. Mm-hmm. Always. And, uh, and that's why, I, one, people love him. Mm-hmm. And you never find anybody saying anything bad about mm-hmm. him. Thanks. Shout out, Nico. Thanks, yes, sir. Talk about your upbringing in Oakland. <laughs> the area. Yeah, the, it's different. No, it ain't different now. But, uh, I, you know, I, I tell people I was lucky to be able to grow up in Oakland. Um, I had the, lu- the luxury to have... Um, Two parents who uh, both had jobs who were able to drive me to practice in East Oakland, West Oakland, San Francisco, or wherever it may be. But also I had, you know, my mom was white and my dad was African-American. And so I I got to grow up in a melting pot. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, racism wasn't anything, um, you know, in our household. It was something that my mom would drive me to seminary in Oakland, um, which is... Um, I wouldn't say a, a nice part, but it worked out. Um, Rainbow <laughs> Center, <laughs> and I used to tell my mom, "Hey, don't don't look left or right. Just keep straight and keep yeah. the car moving, and I'll just jump out as, <laughs> as we get close." Um, but it, you know, it, it's Oakland is is Oakland. It's the melting pot. Um, I was also lucky to be around the greatest athletes at the time of the sports. When you talk about Joe Montana, mm-hmm. um, when you talk about the A's and the Bash Brothers. Uh, you talk about the Warriors. They had Tim Hardaway, Chris mm-hmm. Weber, Run TMC. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I got I I was very fortunate that the sports was was really at a high level. Now basketball, the Warriors weren't that good. They weren't the Warriors of today. Mm-hmm. But um, to be able to play at at the age of 14, 15 with the Warriors um, was something that I got lucky to do when Don when when Nelly invited me to come work out with the guys. Mm, that's dope. <laughs> Growing up, you know, a lot of basketball bred and, and came from there, but who were some of your idols? <laughs> Quiet GP. Or is Quiet. <laughs> Quiet GP. <laughs> when you guys first crossed paths. It, was he ever quiet? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to play for his dad, um, AAU, and so uh, Mr. Mean. Um, and then when you talk about GP, no, he's, he, I don't think he was ever quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got the opportunity to, uh, he was my big brother. How much older is he than you? Uh, he's five years old. Okay. I know that for sure. He's old. Uh, <laughs> 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 and then you have B. Shaw. Yeah. This is another rich, you know, B. Shaw, Greg Foster, Antonio Davis, Hook Mitchell. When you talk about um, basketball, I mean, I, I was very fortunate. I was the youngest, mm-hmm. so I had to make sure I was always pulling up getting everybody's bags and and everything else. But it was cool, but it was a great experience because GP let me know that when I was in high school, I felt kind of good about myself. I thought I was doing the right, right thing. Uh, but he humbled me very quickly to let me know that I wasn't ready and that I wasn't as good as I thought I was. Mm. 
Mm, that stuck with you though. Ooh, did it? <laughs> it made me cry. <laughs> you know, you go when you when you think you're you're playing at a high level, and then you play against GP one on one, and he doesn't let you get a shot off. Damn. Yeah. And there's, you know, I was looking for a referee because I know there were some fouls. <laughs> there had to be some fouls. You but, ever get your get back? Um, I, maybe. <laughs> but I would never tell him that I did that. Uh, it, it was probably years after. But I do have a quick story. Um, I was a rookie playing for Dallas. We're playing in Tacoma when Seattle had to play in Tacoma for a year. And I'm guarding G. And G's posting me up, so I know exactly what he's going to do. He's going to spin right. And then he's going to try to lay the ball up. So he spins right, goes up, and I'm there, and I block it, and I tell him, get that shit out of here. <laughs> and he's running back, look back at me, and I go, oh, no. And uh, he went on like a personal 18-0 run. <laughs> <laughs> a personal. A <laughs> personal. And I was like, damn, what was I thinking? Why did I wake up the monster? And... Uh, and, and back then, because there was so much isolation, that he just put me on one side of the floor and was just like, put you on the island, he was huh? just, oh, uh, island. I don't even know it was an island. It was, it was a flood. <laughs> and so, he played at his own pace, too. Oh, yeah. You can't speed him up. You can't either. speed him up. And you knew he's going to spin and do all these things. But um, I, that's when I knew, man, I, I, and I knew not to say nothing. But, but you couldn't help yourself. But I was a rookie and I felt good that I blocked this shot and I thought that was going to go in the right direction. That's natural, though. I just think any as a hooper, anytime you block a shot, that's the only thing that come out your mouth. Especially someone. Get this shit out. Yeah. That's all you can say. You don't say nothing. Someone, someone you look up to, someone that's dogged you out in the past, you got to get that off your chest. got to yeah. get that off. Football season is back in full swing, and there's no better partner for the gridiron than DraftKings. DraftKings has given all new customers a shot at glory. New customers, all you have to do is bet $5 on any NFL wager and receive instantly $200 in free bets. That's right, DraftKings has given all new customers $200 in free bets when they place any $5 or more wager on a football team of their choosing. You can also win big with same game parlays. Combine multiple bets for the same game for a shot at a huge cash payday. The more lays you add to your bet, the more money you can win. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. You customers use the promo code SMOKE and receive $200 in free bets instantly when placing a $5 wager. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Smooth sack summer is slowly coming to an end, fellas. If you haven't been scaping for the summer sun, it's not too late to sweep your sack of those pesky pubes. As summer comes to an end, and we enter fall, keep your boys clean and fresh just in time for fresh ball fall. The leader in below the belt grooming is here to make sure your pubes feel smoother than a beach ball and smell fresher than your girl's pumpkin spice. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to keep your sweet, sweet sack in check. Inside the package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ears, Nose, and Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. Their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmers feature a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 also has a 700 RPM motor, a new multi-function on and off switch that can be engaged in travel lock. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multi-function on and off switch that can engage a travel lock and gives you the ability to turn on the LED spotlight when needed for more precise shave. Did I mention the trimmer is waterproof too? Whether you're hopping in the shower or hitting up the lake, this razor will devour even the strongest pubes. Now that your sack is smooth, lather up with the Manscaped liquid formulation to get that fresh ball fall freshness. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant to stay cool in the heat, their soothing aloe vera formula with the best in the business for the below the waist freshness, and a clear drying formula to keep your sack looking and smelling good. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag that'll bring your comfort to another level at home or on the go. Keep yourself groomed from head to toe with their Sheer 2.0, a luxury nail grooming kit. This kit includes a stainless steel nail cutter, tweezer, and a groom scissor. With the Performance Package 4.0, your balls will be ready to impress. But make sure you cover the rest with the Shears 2.0. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SMOKE at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off plus free shipping with code SMOKE at manscaped.com. Keep things smooth and fresh as we say sayonara to smooth ball summer 
and enter a fresh ball fall. Man, we're here live from the beautiful, all the smoke, legend suite inside the Wynn Hotel. Here with my brother, Steven Jackson, out here in Vegas, and this will be the first of many collaborations with the Legends team. A former teammate of mine, Spencer Haas, when I played with the Clippers, he always used to have these dope weed socks. And I was like, yo, who'd you get these socks from? He's like, oh, my homeboys out in Manhattan Beach. So they started sending me socks. I went out there and met them. They told me they were starting an athleisure line and started showing me some of the stuff. I'm like, yo, this shit is fire. So, you know, we started talking and became business partners. And, uh, you know, it's been a great partnership and experience ever since. I mean, the Legends brand is just very comfortable. It's clean, it's modern, it, it fits well. I like that tight fit, the, the sport will fit. And also, it got swag to it. So I think it cover all bases. You know, that's why a lot of people like it. It has the fit and the swag to it. And, you know, you can wear it in all occasions. You see the whole LA Clippers teams not rocking what, you know, the NBA sent, but rocking legends. It speaks to the culture, it speaks to athletes, it speaks to everyday nine to five hardworking people. This week wouldn't have been what it should have been without legends, without the sweet, without just the love. The vibe that they created here is what we needed to be successful. This is the vibe that we have in our studios. For legends to come in there and recreate that here in Vegas, it's, it's been awesome, man. Well, man, thank you first and foremost to Legends and the All The Smoke collab on behalf of myself and my partner right here. When I say the name Hook Mitchell, you just mentioned him a second ago, but obviously, Legend, Legend when it comes to uh, basketball in the Bay Area. Talk to us about Hook Mitchell, how good he was, how small he was, and what could have been. Yeah, when you talk about Hook Mitchell, he's always at the top of the list of uh, basketball players. For Oaktown, especially when you talk about the dunk contest, um, he would play anywhere, concrete, in the gym. Uh, I mean, wherever there was a rim and a ball, he would be willing to go play. And uh, I would say he's probably about 5'10". Uh, we could stretch him out to six feet. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about Jumping over cars. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was jumping over speeds. cars. He was jumping over everything, everything and anything. And so, uh, but he loved to play the game. Again, if there was a basketball, if someone would pick him up or he'd tell him to meet him somewhere, he would be there. Mm -hmm. um, but he loved the game of basketball. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes in life we make decisions yeah. that send us the wrong way. And, uh, and that's what happened with him. But his name has always been mentioned as one of the best uh, mm -hmm. to play the game of basketball in the Bay. I got a chance to play against him in the early 2000s, fresh when he had got out um, in a pro-am up in Sacramento. I was the first, obviously, I heard about him, but Jack, this dude was pulling jumpers from half court, but little dude getting little. the breakaway and dunking that bitch. He was probably in maybe late, early 40s, maybe. Yeah. We, and How old is he now? Uh, he's He has to be older than G, and so I would say... Uh, Close to 60, right? Yeah, I would say in that 55 range. Yeah. Um, but when you, when you talk about shooting it from half court, you had to pick him up had to. Bef before half court because he could let it fly. Oh, yeah. um, and this was before, you know, those shows, uh, those shots were considered bad shots. Mm -hmm. And we would be sat, the horn go off, Jack, mm -hmm. Matt, Jason, go sit down. You can't shoot that, but for, for when you talk about hook, he had the range to shoot mm -hmm. it deep. He was tough, like, man. Yeah. Bay Area, area is obviously a very underrated uh, hotbed. Give me your Bay Area all-time starting five, whether they went to the league or not. Oof, 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 oof. Okay, I can start with Bill Russell. Mm. San Francisco Don. Um, you can go, you know, Paul Silas. Mm. Um, when you look at um, G, GP is going to be on there. If not, he's going to track me down. So <laughs> let me let, let's get him on there real quick. Um, J.R. Ryder right oh, there. Oh, you got J.R. Ryder. Easy Ryder. Oh, Easy Ryder. That. He doesn't get enough credit either. He was cold. Oh, he was a bad boy in high school. <laughs> Skyline. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Sabine. Ensignal High Boy. That was a bad boy. Who? Sabine. Who? Dude, they used to wash out cars. They said oh, he was one of the Bears. Nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, he won't make I don't know. Can he, should he make that list? No. Sabine? No. Uh, no, not at all. So, you guys, I, I like JR. I'm going with JR, mm. uh, GP. And then I got to go with uh, one of the older brothers, uh, B. Shaw. I'm going to go B. B. Shaw. Shaw. Um, and, and that would be, I think that's five, maybe six. I probably, did I, let's see. We got Russell. He's pretty good. Silas. Silas. We got Mean Tough. Yep, we're good there. Uh, JR, we're athletic. Mm -hmm. Street. Uh, GP, he's going to make sure everybody knows where to go. And then B Shaw. Yeah, mm. that's Silas. Shoot it. 
Berkeley, you chose to stay home. You could have went anywhere in the country. Oh, before we get there, talk to us about baseball. A lot of people don't know you were real nice on the baseball field. Uh, my, your St. Joe's alumni brother, Ray Young, reminded me before the interview. Uh, but uh, talk to me about baseball and, 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 and let these people know how nice you were on that sport. Dang, you guys, don't you be guys, modest. You guys, do your, you guys get yeah. the information. You guys are good, man. <laughs> Damn. Don't I'm be not, modest. I, um, there's only a few people who know about baseball, but I love the game of baseball. I played both basketball mm-hmm. and baseball. Um, played all the way up to Cal. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know that's why I went to Cal because they, they said I would have the opportunity to play baseball. Mm. And so I got to work out with the group uh, my freshman year um, and was going to play my sophomore year, but then I decided that I was going to go Make a pro. Run at it. And uh, they, they advised that I shouldn't play just in case you get hurt. Mm. But I love the game of baseball, so I was like, I'm not going to get hurt. What position? <laughs> uh, center field. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just enjoy the game of baseball. And so um, that's one of the things... Uh, as a head coach in my office, I, I don't have Sports Center on or, or you know, anything ESPN. I have uh, the baseball network on, and uh, just to watch to see mm-hmm. what's going on in baseball. But um, I just I love watching it. I love being around it. I love watching the guys do what they do. Mm-hmm. It's not an easy game. No, absolutely not. Um, but I, I, also in the Bay Area, we had a a lot of talented baseball players too. When I was growing up, Bobby Smith who was uh, drafted by uh, Tampa Bay at the time. He was Fremont High, but I played a lot of basketball with him. And then when you look at the baseball, we're, we're rich in the uh, talent that comes out of the Bay mm-hmm. with, with, with baseball. For sure. So, again, you end up going to Cal. Um, Could have went anywhere. Baseball was the deciding factor for you? And being home. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I didn't want to leave home. <laughs> <laughs> so, so baseball and staying home. Um, I knew the guys on the team at Cal with Lamont, Murray, uh, Monty Buckley. Um, Buck. Monty, oh, that's my boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so being, and so being with those guys, um, playing pickup games with those guys, they would always say, man, we just need you and we'll be mm. fine. Um, so I guess they did their part in recruiting. Um, and so that's, that's why I felt going staying home, I would have an opportunity to play and, and help those guys. A little off script, but... Thoughts on the, the, the Pac-12 kind of dismantling in front of our eyes? Yeah, I, I, I don't know who's going to be in what conference. Right. The Big 12, Big 10. That's crazy. Um, now, do we if we go Big 10, do we have to fly all the way to New York? <laughs> like, I mean, Every other week, you're on the road, right? Yeah, so I think it's going to be just two conferences coming. Right? Period, and, just power. East and West Conference. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, That's crazy. It, you know, the landscape of college has changed, right? A lot. Um, and I think the landscape of basketball, or any sport, I should say, um, especially in college, has changed. And uh, and for the better, there's a lot of money being made. Yeah. Um, I think the voices of the student athlete are being heard um, at times. But I think uh, the way that we have, have approached it is we were trying to help, you know, share the money, right? Not, not just take Keep the it money. All, yes, right. yes. What could you have done with some NL, NIL money back in your day, running them streets in Oakland? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great question, Matt. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I think we would all benefit uh, in, in, a, in a positive way. But mm-hmm. you know, I think it, it's funny you, you bring that question up because we were never thought about, you know. We just thought about playing. That's it. That's it. You know, Street and Smith, USA Today. That's the only way you found out. You, you were trying to get those publications to see who's number one and who am I chasing yep. to get to the next level. Um, and there was no money involved. It was just, um, there. Were, well, definitely was no Instagram or Twitter. Was, the platforms weren't there, but we were just in it for how do we improve our skill set so we can be top five. Mm-hmm. That summer, then how do I track down the number one player mm-hmm. to see, you know, where my game is? And uh, and but to but if you'd ask me that question, I don't know that, that I, I'm still confused of how this works because <laughs> some states allow it, some uh, don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how much money would you guys have gotten? For oh, at, at UCLA, <laughs> yeah, it would have been some other shit over there. <laughs> we got some good money over there, but it wasn't no NIL money. Spent two years at Cal, made the tournament both years. Uh, end up beating Grant Hill in the tournament. Was that your best experience at Cal? Oh, man. No, you know, I think um, it was one of my best experiences at Cal. Mm-hmm. Uh, basketball-wise was being able to uh, get to the tournament um, and to, you know, beat LSU and then have the opportunity to play the defending champs uh, and Grant and Bobby Hurley. 
and uh, find a way to win that game. Um, everybody talks about the win, but no one really talks about what Hurley did to us. He was cooking us. Mm, yeah. The high pick and roll, we had no answers. It's just we uh, we got lucky. The ball bounced our way. But it was an incredible uh, experience because when you watch the March Madness, it's, uh, it's incredible. It's mm. one of the uh, funnest times of the year. Uh, but I would say on campus, one of my best experiences is, you know, Cal protests everything. Mm-hmm. And so there was a, a naked guy who would walk around campus mm-hmm. with just a thing on front and his book bag and go to class. And, uh, it, it, and it, he was freedom of speech, but this was as a... It's freedom of cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, cheeks. But, <laughs> I ain't sitting in that seat no more. But, but, right. but, but as a young uh, student athlete, it was just eye-opening of like what was happening on campus. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so... To put things in perspective, that was just a normal thing on campus at Cal because there was always someone protesting something. Two things: you made a lot of a lot of us fall in love with number five. <laughs> first of all, did you ever hear the term people used to call you light skin magic? <laughs> no, not light skin. Around my way, that's what it was. Light skin <laughs> magic. That's what they called you. That's pretty cool. That's new. I haven't heard that. Yeah, yeah. But no, that was my favorite player growing up. That's the one that I tried to copy uh, and emulate my game as a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, in Oakland, um, trying to throw the passes he would throw. I couldn't do the sky hook. I wasn't very good at the sky hook, but the baby sky hook. But I just loved the way that he played the game. And at the end, he always found a way to win. And so mm-hmm. that's what really draw, drew me to being, try to be magic. And so to be light sky magic, that's kind of cool. How close were you coming after we played in the finals? Woo, I was in. So what year was this? 03. Pop, yeah, pop. After we won yeah, in 03. 03, great question. So... Um, I meet with Tim and Pop, and um, I knew it. I'm in. Um, the one thing that was a holdup was I was like, and it was a small thing, is like, man, I got to sit here and watch you guys get the rings after just losing <laughs> to you. <laughs> but that's just one game, and like, mm-hmm. we'll get past it and we'll have opportunities to win more. But then um, the loyalty of like, man, we built something in Jersey, and I think we can get there. Um, but not knowing the business side of what was coming down, mm-hmm. that they started, they traded Kmart that following year, and so things fell af- apart fast. But um, to be a Spur, I was very, very close. Mm. Because the reason why I know, because Tony would have been gone and I would have stayed. <laughs> no, that's, that, that, that's how it was all working. Ginobili, because the, the whole summer, the, every, the, everybody was on the list to get J-Kid. That was a, that was, a, they were talking true. about that point, even the finals even stopped. But we even won the finals they was talking about. It. So in the summer, that's all my agent was telling me. If, if J-Kid come, you're going you gonna to stay in San Antonio. If not, you got to go to Atlanta because they're going to mm. keep Tony. Mm. I wish you would have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> if we had them all. Me, uh, J-Kid, Gino, uh, and Tim. Oh. Oh. I would have more chips. Exactly. <laughs> I would have more chips. 94 NBA draft, number two pick overall. The experience of the draft, talk about it. Yeah, the draft is, um, again, surreal. Um, because as a as a kid growing up, you, that's all you dream about. You watch it on TV, and so when it's your opportunity to go to the draft room and just to wait to hear your name, um, it's kind of like a a movie in, in in fast forward and then also in rewind mm-hmm. because you're thinking about what you're gonna do in the NBA, um, and then you go with a rewind because you think about all the all the things you did to get to that point, mm-hmm. um, and then to see your mom and dad. You know, excited for you, but mm-hmm. you're more excited for them because it's also a thank you to them. All the hard work and Making sacrifice proud, they made. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever have within your first year uh, an awe moment? Like, damn, I'm playing so and so. I know you got thrown in the fire with GP early, but outside of that, oh, MJ, in- um, everybody. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about the the greatest, uh, you talk about M and and seeing and having to guard him on a possession or two. I'll never forget in Dallas, I'm guarding him on the right box. Um, I didn't know what he was going to do. I just was just hoping that, he one, he didn't dunk it, and two, he just did it real fast so we can get on to Get over get, with yeah. it. <laughs> so he spins baseline. I'm thinking he's going to go to the fade, and he Step goes down. one more dribble, and he kind of jumps. I'm going, oh, no, he's going to dunk this. And he kind of did a reverse and flipped it on the glass. Okay, that's cool. You didn't dunk it. Two points. <laughs> and then he starts running down the sideline, and he looked back and wink. And I go, oh, this is an asshole. <laughs> 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 oh, but but I was like, that's cool. You, you didn't dunk it. And then, you know, I think when he likes you, and maybe this isn't true, but I, 
I think when he likes you, he'll take it easy. He'll go and get his average. But if he does not like you, coming for blood. It's, it's, it's a 50 piece coming. Yeah. Mm, mm. He, he ever give any of your teammates a 50 piece? Um, you know what? We, uh, I think he gave us the average. <laughs> <laughs> we like 40. <laughs> yeah, <Right>. 40. <laughs> and we were all happy yeah. in the locker room. Man, he didn't have 55. Right. right. <laughs> you have a double right. nickel. Uh, your name is attached to one of the greatest basketball shoes of all time, the yes. Air Zoom Flight 95. Yes. What's the backstory to that? With the ones he got on now. Oh, uh, no, they, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a great a shoe. Um, you know, it's funny, we got some sent to us the other day, and I kind of laughed because I'm like, man, today's shoe is so light. This shoe was a little heavy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was like, at the time, they're like, oh no, this is like light. Right, right. So technology has grown, but, um, the, the wheels were like a car um, because everybody talked about the speed. Um, and so I, I thought uh, when they showed me the shoe, I was like, oh, this is different. And it looks cool because we got, it looks like it has four wheels and we're ready to roll. And um, and so I, they convinced me it was light. I thought it was great. And and to see it today, it, it, it's still talked about, which lets you know that uh, who designed it was doing the right Good thing. Job, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get a taste of the playoffs in Phoenix and, and from 96 to 2001. Got a chance to play with Steve Nash, but what they don't know is <laughs> I got drafted That's right. when y'all were there in, in 97. Yeah, uh, I think that was the year the Suns had traded for McDyess and McLeod yep. and Rex Jim. I think Rex was there already, but they had one pick left in the draft, the second to last pick in the draft. And I got a chance to come work out with y'all, play pickup, and I got drafted, but they told me they was going to cut me, so I didn't get a chance to be on that team. But I got a chance to spend like a couple of days with them. One of the great experiences, but I knew that team was going to be good. But talk about the playoffs of that team. Well, you, you talk about the uh, the young and the, and the older when you talk about Rex and Danny and those guys. Uh, but McDice was young. Mm, um, bouncy. Boy, was he. Uh, <sighs> Spin lob for sure. Yes. When you talk about the McDi uh we talk about Sean Kemp and these guys who would just turn and go and you could throw it anywhere. Dice is one of those guys. And so, um, but it's funny, like you bring up Nash, you know, Nash was coming off the bench. I was coming off the bench. We had Kevin Johnson, mm -hmm. you know, there. That's crazy. And so um we, we were both watching Kevin do his thing, and then we would go in and sometimes it'd be Kevin. Nash and myself out there, you know, small ball yes, at, at its at its best. But it was uh, it was surreal because you had great uh, Kevin Johnson. I, again, I don't think gets enough credit being a great point tough. guard in our yeah. mm -hmm. in our league. Uh, but you had a future, you know, hall of, uh, hall of famer and Steve and MVP sitting there as the third string point guard, mm -hmm. which uh, it's, crazy. It, crazy. it's a great story about work and belief and and the opportunity and the right system. What you can make of it, and just mm -hmm. kind of you know waiting your turn and not being uh, and being patient about the whole situation, and so uh, it was a great team. I learned how to win because I think when you come in the league, you think you play for forty minutes and you can be up fifteen, and then all of a sudden the game gets real serious. Yeah. Six minutes left, you're up fifteen. All of a sudden you're down ten, and you go like, "What happened?" Well. The mature team, the team that knows what it means to take care of the ball, mm -hmm. and then what it means to play defense, and that's why you see so many swings. But that's where I learned how to win the game. And the last six minutes is where the game really starts. And I didn't know that being drafted, and I found out in Dallas of what it means to uh, or how to win an NBA game. Now that I think about that, I see why I look so good that day when I tried out. I had you <laughs> and Steve. All I had to do was run and jump. Oh, bro. you thought it was you. I thought it was me. Uh, yeah, I thought it was, it was me. Him. It was him. <laughs> it was him. How did the bleach blonde hair come into effect? That might be why he's bald now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. You're about to fry this shit. <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, well, that's what happens when you're bored and hurt. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I broke my ankle during that season, um, and so we had three screws put in, mm. and uh, I'm bored, so I'm sitting there sitting there and going, man, shoot. And someone said, hey, have you ever, you know, dyed your hair? And I go, no. Nah. Like, and I said, let's do it. Cause I, cause <laughs> what I, year was this? Um, let's do it. Break, the late 90s? Is, no, this year, Phoenix. I'm in Phoenix. I would want to say 97. 97, yeah. Like, yeah. So I break my ankle, and so I'm out for the season. So I'm like, I'm not going to see anybody. Right, fuck it. I'm rehabbing. And then um, all of a sudden, I dye my hair. I go to my uh, rehab. 
Somehow word got around that I had dyed my hair. So my teammates come over <laughs> to where I'm rehabbing and they go, we just had to come see your hair. And I said, well, I appreciate it. You didn't even ask how I'm doing, but okay, right. oh well. So they check out my hair yeah, and they're laughing. Awkward. They're killing me. And I'm like, oh, this was a bad idea. <laughs> well, it gets worse because now I'm, I'm starting to feel better. I'm like, I think I can play in the playoffs. So we play the Lakers um, and, I, and I have my hair still dyed. They asked me, was I going to cut it off? I go, man, I've gone this far. I might as well keep going. So I played in the playoffs with my hair dyed. Different experience, so I said, <laughs> experience. I can say I checked that box off and, uh, and I can let anybody know, like you said, it ends into being bald. Yeah. <laughs> 2001, 2002, you traded for Stephon Marbury to New Jersey. I was just on that team uh, the year before, I mean, right before that you got traded there. What was that like going there with all them athletes you had there and all the weapons you had going into that? Yeah, that team was special when you talk about, they were rookies. We had, you know, Jason Collins. We had a pack, pack team. Young RJ. A pack, yeah, RJ. Mm, RJ was um, tough. And Kmart and Kmart, Steph did not, they did not get along no, at all. So Kmart was playing at a high level for us. Uh, it was easy to play with him, throw it up. He's, he was going to get it. It was Kerry Kittles was Van coming Horn. back from injury. Keith Van Horn. That was tough. Yeah. yeah. So we had scores. Rodney Rogers. Rodney Rogers comes over. We get that in a trade. And so it was uh it was a fun team. Mm -hmm. uh, RJ was gonna run. As he'll tell you, he wasn't a shooter then. Lucius was the shooter. Lu Lucius was, Harris was the shooter. It's funny that I played with Lucius as a rookie in Dallas. So for us to be back together in, yeah. uh, in Jersey, so we understood what it was all about. But it was a team that um, actually came together in preseason when we believed that we could win. And uh, from that point on, we just we just took off. It was easy. Just run, you're going to get the ball. Mm -hmm. So RJ ran, Kerry ran, and then Kmart was coming as a trailer. <laughs> it, it, Clean it up. That's right. So for me as the quarterback, I just had to make sure I kept everybody happy. Immediate, I mean, y'all, 2002, 2003, y'all run through the East two years in a row and come up short. Yep. What's, how, what's, what's going on through your mind after y'all go back to back running through the East but can't get past the West? Well, the the West was uh, the first time we had to go against the Lakers, so I don't think anybody was going to beat them. <laughs> at that time. <laughs> at that time. Shaq was different. Oh. Was he 36, was yeah. it 36 and 12 in the finals? Yeah, he. he, he he he, uh, th those numbers. Oh man, we the whole team was going Shaq. There was nothing. I remember, I remember that. I remember that. Todd McCullough. Oh, I felt so bad for him, bro. Aaron Williams. Aaron Williams. Yeah, he was too small. <laughs> Strong. He tried. Too small. He tried. Too, too he, tried. Small. he tried. Um, but when you look at um our team those two years, we ran, and then um we think we're gonna have an opportunity to do it again. And unfortunately, with with the business, the basketball jumps in. Mm -hmm. There were trades, um, and so. Uh, but it was uh, a fun time. Uh, th those two teams, um, again, um, we were more built to play West Coast basketball than mm -hmm. East Coast, and maybe that was the, the reason why we had success on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. You got any uh, Kobe stories from those so battles or any great Kobe stories? <laughs> well, the one uh, story, going back to that blonde hair, um, we're playing in the playoffs, and I know which way Kobe wants to go, um, and he gets to go where he went. And he jumps, and I jump. Unfortunately, he, his jump is a little higher and longer. <laughs> I jump. I, my elevator can only go so high, and then yeah. it says return. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he hit a game winner um, over me uh, in the playoffs. But when you talk about Kobe and his uh, competitiveness, it didn't matter how big or how small you were. He was gonna. He was gonna try to destroy you. Yes. Um, and that's what separated him from everyone. He was an assassin. Um, he would cut you, and by the end of the game, you didn't know that you were going to bleed out. And, and, and so, and so it, that's just his mentality. And uh, that's a great it, way to explain. He he wanted to to win in everything, all costs. Yeah. Um, 08, This is a <laughs> oh eight. We're in uh, Macau, and golf has now become a little popular. We have some golfers on the team. D. Will and the, and uh, Michael Red. So we go to a driving range. And Kobe's feeling like, hey, this is easy. I can pick uh, this thing up. He's a lefty, too. He ain't yes, shit. Yes, He ain't shit. He yeah. came out to one of my tournaments. I was like, yeah. oh, you're human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was shit. He was shit. So, oh, you're human. Yeah. So he asked, he goes, hey, and Michael Red luckily was left-handed. And so he goes, hey, can I borrow that club? And everybody goes, you swing left-handed? And so everybody was like, oh, he's all messed up. So he goes to swing, and everybody's like, 
a, maybe that was a practice swing. And uh, he missed the ball. And then, like, you know, he gets competitive. And he wants to hit it the farthest. And as you said, I think that's the one sport that he, we saw him as a human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, humanized. Not to compare the two, but you got a perfect chance to play with both of them when they were great. Did you see that same fire and wanting to kill people that MJ had? Is that the same kind of? How were their approaches similar or different? I, I think they were very similar. Mm -hmm. I think uh, even the league uh, as players, because um, Kobe, that was the guy that he watched. Mm -hmm. You know, he would walk, chew gum, <laughs> right. uh, tuck his shirt, shirt in, in dress yeah. socks that were at the same height. Um, and, you know, a lot of times you're labeled as uh, the next Michael. Well, he was he was really the next Michael, mm -hmm. um, you know, and nothing against Harold Miner or anybody else like that, but they got the label of from the dunk contest that they were going to be the next Michael, and a lot of times that was the curse. Mm -hmm. um, and and so, but uh, when you talk about Kobe, and the closest thing to to Michael is Kobe. Two thousand three finals, stack and the Spurs. Oh, you brought it. You had to face the camera. That's tough. This is that was planned out. Man, I need some water. Man, that was, that was tough. That was hey, tough. Hey, but you, you don't have to drink much because you was frying us. It was frying us. <laughs> so you were supposed to be in San Antonio. No, wait, no, 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 it wasn't there yet. It wasn't there yet. Year after that, yeah. after we won it, yeah. Okay. Well, y'all talk about I wasn't there. I was. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> but it, it, it like this, Tony was done before the series because it was already talked about. You know what I mean? But you was frying us. Yeah. Frying us. I, I was trying. Um, but it, it's funny, Jack, Speedy Claxon. He my, saved us yes. because he the only one could keep up with him. Yeah. He was doing Tony so bad, bro. And Tony had a bad year because he had stuff. He done what he, he got. Oof. But the finals, we needed Speedy because we would have been down him. bad without Couldn't him. do nothing with it. We'd have been no, down bad. No, but no one really talks about Speedy. Speedy was big for you guys. Speedy did an incredible job. Um, but yeah, that ring, that was a nice ring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. But you know, that was my get back I, that's with Byron Scott. Oh, I, I get it. Yeah, I, I traded him. I, I owed him that. Oh, well, you won. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when you talk about um, the Spurs, we, we game six, we had it going in our direction. We were winning. It was, I think we were up 13 or 15 in 15. the fourth. And, and all we can think about is we just got to get it to seven. Because if we get it to seven, there could be suffocation. It could be like mm -hmm. the, the pressure's on Pressure. them. Yeah, it's going to tighten up. You, you know, they're at home. They, they were supposed to win this series. And so, um, but as everyone knows, we didn't get to seven. Uh, they won in six. And, uh, Tim it, had a damn ooh. quadruple double. Yeah, he, he, was, he was a machine. I don't know if he's human either. Um, I believe it. <laughs> because Tim was just, you know, he was automatic. You can pin you can pin him in for for whatever 30, 15, 20, and six blocks like like that's, penciling in. Th that's what he did. But for the players on the court, Jay, it, I ain't gonna lie. For us, we were watching you, and y'all probably was watching Tim. Like, yeah. And just and everybody was thinking like, just imagine them two, coming, two together coming together next together. year. Yeah. Like man. it was unbelievable just to watch. Yeah, I still have nightmares about that. That I, you know, that was a hard decision, but I thought loyalty was the one to go yeah, stay, stay in Jersey. Um, but um, they, I but was they in. wasn't loyal. I, it, it happens. It happens. <laughs> Something, you know, obviously, Hall of Fame career, multiple time, 10-time All-Star, world champion. You weren't a great shooter to start your career, but then you closed on. And when did that lock in and... and, and you know, you finished at number 12 all time on the three-point made list. Yeah, you know, I think um, when you talk about different parts of the game, um, I knew if I was ever around scores, I, that that that's perfect for me because my job is to let them eat. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, if to set the table, if stack, you know, Matt, like, hey, my job is to figure out what you guys, where you like to score, mm -hmm. right? You like to run, you like spot up shots. Then my job as uh, the, the table setter is to put you in those positions to be su successful. So when you talk about carry running, throw it to him on the mm -hmm. dead run. RJ, throw it to him on the dead run. Um, being able to, you know, understand Rex, catch and shoot, mm -hmm. right? And so that that was, I didn't have to worry about shooting because everyone else on the mm -hmm. floor wanted to shoot. And so to, to know that, and then as the game slows down and as you get older, you got to work on some parts if you want to stay around long enough. Mm -hmm. And so the corner three was something that I had to, to work on if I wanted to play longer. Um, and so 
I spent more time um, on that part of my game to to make sure that I could stick around. And uh, what year was that? Did you start trying to? I want to say oh oh mm, oh six oh seven. So maybe about ten or eleven years in your career. Yeah, I was I, mean, I was getting old, <laughs> and uh, and also I think you know when you talk about shooting because I was always labeled as a non shooter even mm-hmm. till the day I retired. I was a non shooter, and uh, I you know. Being with Dirk in Dallas, I said, look, you're going to be doubled. My guy's coming to help. I will always be open. Mm-hmm. So if you can find me, I will be open. And guess what? I will throw it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. But but it's, you know, I, I think you always have to pick apart every summer, as I talked about, if you can get 1% better. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, working on shooting just didn't happen overnight. Mm-hmm. You, you have to work on it. On, on a continuous basis um, when people aren't watching. Right. You know, everybody wants to be recognized for working hard. Um, it's when you don't, when people aren't watching you, when you're in the gym by yourself. When you're shooting the ball, you don't have a rebounder, and you got to go get it. Mm-hmm. You know, we, that's... How we grew up. That's how we grew up. That means you love it. Yeah. Well, unless you got 10 basketballs right there <laughs> on the side, which we didn't have. Right, so, right. you yeah. know, you look at shooting by yourself, you got to go get your rebound. Right. And today's staff, we got eight rebounders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and two passers mm-hmm. for each player. So now the player only has to worry about is shooting. So how do you imagine, you know, your misses? Right? How do you work on your misses? Better misses, right? Um, a lot of times everyone looks at if you make it, that's great. But I look at it the other way. How bad did you miss? Mm-hmm. Can we give you a point for hitting the back rim? Are you long? <laughs> well, take a point off if you're short, mm-hmm. right? And so, because if it's short, it's never going in. Yeah. So that that that's just something that I, I always thought about as a pro. I had to work on my game, um, as much as people said that I was good at other parts. Right. 2011 loaded, and to me, one of the most legendary runs, considering the teams you guys knocked off on the way. Just to name a few guys, Marion, Pedro Stoyakovic, Tyson Chandler, Jason <laughs> Terry. I remember Jason Terry hit 10-3. You guys swept us in the first round with the Lakers. JT hit 10 threes in game four in Dallas. You guys were going crazy. You guys end up beating Miami's big three in the finals. Uh, how special was that team? Uh, it was a great team. Um, I think the key word team. Um, we all accepted Dirk was our, our best player. Uh, Jason Terry was our next best player. Um, when you talk about Tyson and myself, we talked about defense. How can we help Dirk? How can we protect the the guys that they were going to go after? Um, and then it was just about making the right play. You know, not not worry about yourself. Who if you're if you're not open, get off of it. Mm-hmm. And so um, it it was a great team. We were close. We would go to dinners all the time on the road, um, and we cared about one another. And I thought. Um, through tough times, you know, that Miami series wasn't easy because mm-hmm. um, we had an opportunity in game one and got away from us, and then we're down 15, I think, in game two, and there was a little shadow boxing in front of our bench that uh, kind of pissed us off. And so um, from that point on, um, we kind of were like, okay, they, they're showboating, so we, we got we, mm-hmm. we to gotta make a stand. Let's turn it on. You just mentioned team. Uh, you That team alone held LeBron James to 17 points a game in the finals. How did you guys collectively uh, slow him down? <laughs> That's a question he's going to have to answer. <laughs> uh, you know, I think, you know, for the game plan was just to give different looks um, and then throw different bodies, you know. And, uh, again, someone who's not on that list, when you talk about uh, D. Steve. Sean Stevens, yep, yeah. You know, he wasn't Great job. scared. And so... That that was you know we had a lot of role players, including myself as a role player, um, JJ Barrera. Guys weren't scared to Play take a game. charge or or be in the way or try to you know do something, and, and I think that's what helped us. But uh, we just try to make it tough on on LeBron. He's going to score, he's going to get his attempts, but you just can't give him freebies because if you give him freebies, that's where he can hurt you. Uh, Dirk was incredible during this run. Twenty eight points a game, shot over forty six percent from the three point line. One, how special was he during that run? But just two, looking back on it, you got a chance to play with Prime Dirk and you're coaching Luca, who still hasn't hit his prime, which is fucking scary. Uh, arguably two of the greatest p- European players ever do it. But how special was Dirk? Yeah, Dirk was a warrior, man. Um, I think, um, and also funny, I, I know this is, he, he, he would rap in German, 
Um, <laughs> I don't know what he was saying, but he would say that he was rapping. Um, but he had a great personality off the court. I think everyone got to see him on the court um, and just, you know, the, the, the fadeaway, uh, the one dribble, hard dribble right, uh, bank. Um, but he worked on all that. He was a worker. He worked extremely hard on all the stuff that you saw in the game. Um, and so when you compare the two, uh, uh, Dirk will tell you that Luca's better than he is at the age of 23. Mm -hmm. You know, Dirk's very honest. He was like, I don't know if I was going to make it in the league when I was young. Mm. Um, but um, when you look at what Luca's doing at 23, it's unbelievable. But Dirk changed the game. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk about being able to give space, a big putting it on the floor, uh, one or two dribbles either way, and then, again, his shooting ability was off the charts. Coach Giannis, yep. how was that? Unbelievable. Um, when you talk about uh, a young man who would, you know, do anything you ask him to do, I mean, he wanted to be great. And uh, I'm excited to see where he is today, but he, again, is just starting to climb the mountain. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't reached his full potential mm. either. Scary. That's crazy to say. Scary. I, I, uh, yes, it is as a coach. <laughs> <laughs> crazy to say. But uh, his work ethic is like no other. He works extremely hard um, during the season and off the season. And so uh, to be able to uh, be around uh, Giannis when he uh, he's still young, but younger, um, again, his growth, uh, giving him the ball, um, you know, when I was there to help expand his game was something that we all thought would help uh, us as a team, but help him, and, uh, and he ran with it. But you know what's what's funny about um, the two players you've talked about, right, Luca and uh, Giannis? Um, for my young coaching career, I've had the opportunity to coach KG, Paul Pierce, mm. uh, Giannis, and now Luca. Uh, and at the All Star Game in Cleveland for the 75th, um, I got to have all three, of, uh, well, all of them, kind of standing by me. And uh, Giannis tells us, well, he he brings up the story to Luca, like, "Hey, is coach making you run?" And I go, "Look, I go." Giannis, don't bring, don't start talking about the things I made you do. <laughs> and so, and then, and then Ticket, oh my goodness. Ticket goes, oh man, coach used to make us run so much. Training camp, we're at Duke, he's making us do uh, sprints. And I'm like, okay, time to go. We got, let's, let's end this meeting because Luca doesn't need to hear all the things that I made you guys do. Luca's not doing those things. <laughs> <laughs> None of them. None of them. <laughs> um, real quick before we get to these quick hitters, uh, obviously, you know, Luca just won a, a, a championship uh, back in his country, but he looked like chiseled, chiseled, in yeah. scary. Look at him. Is the yeah, league, yeah. is the league ready for an in shape, Luca? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. He's I, I coming. So. Yeah, he's coming. I think. Uh, what we all saw, um, Luca is um, taking, you know, his body serious. And I, I think uh, during the season, I think Reggie or someone made the comment that he thought he was too heavy. And what I, I love about Luca, uh, he never runs from uh, opinions. And so when Reggie said that, uh, he worked on his body. Good challenge. And then he took off. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I, I think it just shows character that. Um, he's never one to blame anybody. If if this is someone's opinion, that's going to help him get better. I thought He'll he absorbed it, it mm -hmm. and then uh, he he used it in a positive way. It's rare for young players. Yes. Um, in your opinion, top five point guards of all time. Oh man. Okay. So we got like, there's some guys who are labeled point guards, but they're not point guards. Is Steph a point guard? Yes. Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh wait. <laughs> yes, he is. Ooh. Oscar Robinson, point guard? Yes, Oscar's definitely a point guard. Okay, all right. All right, so I'm going to go with Oscar. I'm going to go with Steph. Um, I'm, I, I, GP's on there, because if mm, I, yeah, GP's not on there, call. man, a call, he's going to show up and knock on my door. <laughs> <laughs> GP. You know um, he's right down the street, too. The, uh, yeah. Uh, let's look at um, John Stockton. And then Magic yes. Johnson. Mm. Hell of a five. Tough list. Five dinner guests, dead or alive. Well, I think one, you mean starting, you mean if we were having dinner tonight? Dead or alive, your dinner table plus five people. Okay, I was going to start with my dad. Um, and let's see. 
Uh, Obama would have to be there. I would go with uh, Martin Luther King mm. Jr. Would be, I would have to have him there. And then um, Bill Russell. And then um, I want a young, I, want, I need a younger pl player, athlete. Uh, you know, maybe Colin Kaepernick would be nice. there. That would be dope. That's a dope vibe. Because Interesting conversation. When you talk about what Bill Russell stands for, yep. uh, not just, you know, we, we sometimes we're just labeled athletes, but like when you look at that group, um, they did more probably off the court than mm -hmm. they did on the court. So and that's saying a the, lot. Yeah. So we can learn from that, and I would love to hear their stories. <clears throat> One album you can listen to with no skips? Oh, The Chronic? Oh, good Can't call. Go wrong with that. Damn, that's a good Maybe call. Get so <laughs> yeah. Piece of advice you would give younger J Kid. Don't to, dye your hair blonde. The, oh, that, well, that's one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Keep your hair, yeah. Um, I would say listen. Mm. You got to listen. Don't 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 talk until the person's finished talking, but make sure that you're listening to what's being told. Um, because sometimes when you're young, you think you know it all, and uh, when you're getting advice, you might you might miss something that could have helped you avoid a situation. Do you feel like ever looking back? Um, I was someone who football is my first sport. Do you ever look back and thought? I mean, with all due respect to baseball, that you really had a real shot if you would have stuck with it to play professional baseball? Yeah, for sure. I, I would have to say yes. I would. I truly believe that I had a talent to to be able to play baseball. Um, now, how far I would have gotten, I don't know. Um, but I would have done everything possible that I did in basketball mm -hmm. to to do in so baseball. You would have been straight. <laughs> you would have been straight there. Um, First thing you do when you wake up in the morning, last thing you do when you go to bed, before you go to I bed. I guarantee you his answer ain't going to be the same as Stackhouse. <laughs> <laughs> First thing I would do when I wake up? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I, I kind of do an exam of my body. What part is hurting today? <laughs> <laughs> what is it today? Is this yeah. in bed before you stand up? Yeah, or this, this, you stand? This, uh, once I wake up and I go, whew. Is this going to be a good day? And then I go, body exam. Is it my disc, my lower back hurting? Ooh, is me. it my knee? Is it my neck? Oh, shit, it's all of them. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so once it kind of goes through, like, oh, we're all right there, we're all right there, then it's like, okay, then I slide to the bathroom. Oh, right? nigga, there it, it goes, there it goes. Because if you play long enough, you don't walk no. to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You just slide. Like, mm -hmm. slide. So sometimes you hold a wall. Just yeah, depending on oh, the day. Yeah. Yeah, just depending on the day. Uh, so, so to say, when I wake up, it's a it's a body check. Okay, before you go to bed. Uh, sh go to bed. Um, you, you try to just reflect on on what you did today, um, and then you you kind of think about what you're gonna do tomorrow. Mm, good call. Before we go to the last question, uh, I want to bring your son in. Come in, little man. Watch out that light, so you don't knock the light over. He I don't know if he's an athlete. Uh, oh, okay. He, he, he cleared. He cleared. He so as, cleared. as being obviously uh, dad, head coach of an NBA team, how do you balance? Uh, I'm talking. I want to talk to you first, pops. Oh, okay. But I want how to do you? That, but check out his hat, though. That's just clean. That's yeah. that's a that's a coach's son. Limited edition. You can't get that. <laughs> how do you how do you balance father and kind of obviously? You know he's he's he, he's a hooper now. So how yeah. do you balance not giving too much, giving enough? Where's that balance at as a father? That's a great question, Matt. Um, we just had this conversation too with a, another friend of mine. Um, when you talk about um, the balance, because I I, I want to be dad. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to be coach. Um, but also I want because he might hear a lot of positivity of, oh you're so good, you're so good. Right. And I kind of come from the other side. To balance it out. To balance it out. So you haven't done anything, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and he'll tell you that I say that he was trash. <laughs> 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 but but the beauty is um, that I, the, the most important thing is that he knows that I love him. Right. Mm -hmm. And that I'm going to do everything possible to help him achieve his goals. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but he knows that I will talk trash to him. Is to your, da him. your dad's tough on you? Sometimes. Like, after a game, if I play bad, it's going to be a long car ride home. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever have to tell him, like, Dad, that's enough? He'll keep talking. It don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter what you say. What it all about boils down to your dad's J kid though? Yeah. What about when it, what, but what about when you play good? Is it a good conversation the whole ride home? Depends. It depends. <laughs> if I play too good, then you're gonna see more trash talking. But uh -huh. <laughs> but you know, but you know, it comes from a loving place though, right? To get you better. Yeah, just to make me better. There That's you right. go. How old are you? I just, uh, twelve. So you're going into seventh grade. Yeah. What's your What's your goals in basketball? Get better. Try to make it somewhere. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Right. All right. Last question. Go ahead, Jack. If you could see one guest in all the smoke, who would it be? But before you answer, you have to help us get your answer on the show. Could be someone you coach. Could be someone you coach. Could be someone you coach. That's cold in the mud. Cold in the mud. Yep. Breaking all kind of records early. Mm -hmm. He says he's different. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> he is different. He is different. We you need a kid, man. You talking about 77? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need 77. Okay. We need 77 on uh, the show. He's, he's chill. He, he seems like he uh, seems he, cool. Oh, he's I saw him on JJ's podcast. No, nah, he. You know what? Um, you get to see the, a different side. That's what we want to see. Yeah, and yeah. I think uh, he would fit perfectly in this seat. Love it. Love All right, it. so that's easy. I, I know my homework. Yeah, simple. Got it. I took up for him one time on 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 uh, one of the shows on Fox. And he had somebody reach out to him and say appreciate it. That's so dope. I know he's Oh, it's only it. right then. So he owes oh, you so pretty this, much. No, nah, he don't owe me, but he just, <laughs> Oh, so this is an <laughs> easier solid. sell. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. got it. Yes, sir. Got it. <laughs> got his back. We got his back. Hey, <laughs> I can pass the ball. So <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. that's what you do best. One of the, the greatest. Ball, yes, sir. So I'm going to pass One it. of the greatest. Yeah. So I'll get it, I'll get the ball back to you guys. Appreciate well, man, Jay, appreciate we appreciate you, man. Congratulations on all the success. Best of luck next season. Thank you. Bust out your spot his ass and make the team. Not serving him. <laughs> <laughs> serving him. They was giving me the ball every time. Said don't like me saying that, but said we got footage. <laughs> but man, we appreciate you. Best of luck. Continue to move forward. Best of luck to you, little man. You can catch this episode, Jason Kidd, on all the smoke. Showtime basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. Ink Master is back with an all new host. Welcome to the Ink Master shop. I've been sitting at home judging this competition for 13 seasons. I think I'm a little bit more nervous now. Legendary fan favorite artists return for another chance at the title. You guys ready to meet the new judges? Ryan Ashley, oh, Ami James, man. and Nico Hurtado. Oh my God. This competition is a mental, physical, and emotional battle, but the higher the risk, the higher the reward. Yeah! Stop with the purple. There's too much purple. You want to knock me out? Come fight me, bro. Come fight me, bro. Ooh. You knock this tattoo out of the park. It feels like a new style. This is the strongest group of artists this competition has ever seen. But that is not all. Dave! As the master of chaos, Dave will be stopping by throughout the competition to keep you on your toes. Yay! Woo! It's time to earn the return. Ink Master, exclusively on Paramount+. Plus.